This year, we got to see the impossible happen. We saw a franchise and studio known for its single player experience transform quite successfully, I might add, into a cooperative experience. Sure, some critics might not have been able to see the diamond beneath the rough, but the co-op bros, we know a good co-op game when we see them. And that's why I'm here to say that The Outlast Trials is one to check out for you and your best friends. Okay, did I get you? Probably not. Kind of hard to click on a review on the Outlast Trials and not see the gag 10 seconds in, but I did it not just for the fun of it, but to prove a point at the beginning that I want to come back to again later. The Outlast Trials is a great co-op game. It does successfully transform the franchise into a cooperative experience, but it hasn't quite been given the credit it deserves. So we're here as the co-op bros to do exactly that. Quick heads up, this game is very graphic in every way possible, so here's your friendly content warning. Thank you. Oh, oh god, he's right here, dude, he's right here. Wait, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Oh, he didn't see us! What? Oh, Jesus Christ. Dude, the darkness, I'm telling you. Where one was the darkness. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, oh. oh god, no, 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 think... no, no. Don't say anything, bro, don't breathe. This guy's blind, dude, I don't think he can see you unless he maybe... Wow. Can... Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay. One I'm out of darkness. Since we didn't give you all a dedicated how to for the Atlas Trials, I'll get into the nitty gritty of it all here. Top level view The Atlas Trials is a four player online co op game for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, and PC with cross play for all of those platforms. The experience is split into individual trials and challenges, so each player in your group will have full say progression on both their character's skills and upgrades as well as their progress through the game. Additionally, we found that outside of the inability of the guest player to choose which trial they'll be participating in, they have just as much player agency as the host. Finally, for those of you into it, you can use matchmaking to play with randoms, and that includes a quick play option for any mission that is available or specific trials. So that's everything you need to know about the co-op features included in the package, all of which are really great outside of no local co-op, but that's also not too surprising in 2024. We also found in our experience that the game is well polished, we never once lost connection to each other, to the server, and never once ran into a bug. We're playing on our PCs, and of course, everyone will have different experiences on that front, but we can report that it wasn't an issue for us. Overall, from an ease of play perspective, I think At Last Trials is a slam dunk, and considering this is their first go at a multiplayer title, it's a big win for Red Barrels. You got me, Mr. Cop. You got me. Okay. I got you. Oh, nice, bro. Let's go, dude. That was awesome. Correct. I just bricked him. Outlast Trials, at its core, is an action horror title. The game is based around several trials and challenges, which equate to the levels where you have to overcome varied objectives and escape in one piece. The trials are larger missions with multiple objectives and areas to move through, whereas the challenges reuse parts of the larger trials and smaller single objective missions. Overall, there are five trials, which take about an hour on your first playthrough, and 10 challenges, which take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. That might not sound like a lot, but Gabe and I ended up spending about 15 hours with the game and found it to be a healthy amount of content for the $40 price tag. Additionally, you unlock a final trial after completing all the other trials and challenges, which then unlocks higher difficulty versions of the same missions. Given that your first run through a trial or challenge has a learning curve to how objectives work or how the levels are laid out, we actually found ourselves looking forward to the opportunity to replay trials, something we usually wouldn't bother with in most games. It's definitely a testament to the level design on display that we'd be willing to subject ourselves to multiple rounds in each trial. But now that I got the general structure of the game down, what do trials actually look like and how do you get through them? At the beginning of each trial, you enter with almost nothing to your name that will help you get through the insanity that is laid out before you. You see, the idea of the Outlast series is that you're essentially powerless. You're not like Leon from Resident Evil, dropkicking zombies in the face. You're a nameless recruit who has the ability to crouch, run, and hide when danger comes. So when you enter a trial, your first move is to pick up items that might come in handy later. You can find medicine to recover health, antidotes to cure insanity you might incur, batteries for your night vision goggles, bricks to throw at enemies to slow down their pursuit, and so on. None of these items are going to break the game per se, or make like a huge difference, but they are important to have when trouble arises. Additionally, after your first trial, you'll get to choose a rig to bring with you, which is a more powerful ability that charges after each use. There's a heal spray, a stun, a smoke bomb, and like an x-ray scanner goggle thing. 
These are crucial to have prepared for bigger moments, like when you're trying to escape on the pods at the end of the mission, you need to stun an enemy or throw a smoke grenade so you can make a clean escape. So the trial sees you trying to clear an objective like fixing these radar machines while avoiding the various enemies that are near invincible outside of stunning them or throwing a brick at them to slow them down. It's a lot of careful exploration and timing to get it right, and the intensity is obviously high given the scare factor going on in the series. After completing a few objectives, you make your escape and live to fight another day. Get in there, bro. Get in there. Get in there. Uh, me. Get in yeah, there. I'm just gonna get in there. Okay. okay. We're out. We're... Oh god, no! Let me in, Gooseberry! Let me in! Jeez, oh, man, dude, she got crazy. me like in the tube. That was awful. That's awful. Oof, that, that was unfortunate that we had the guy in there. A oh, minus, man. bro. I had an A. I probably had an A plus yeah. until. There's also a character progression loop that we really appreciated. After each trial, you'll receive experience and tickets among a smattering of cosmetics. Those tickets can be spent in three ways, on rig upgrades, like a longer heal duration or fast recharges, prescriptions, like an extra inventory spot or better movement, and finally amps, like not activating sound traps or breaking doors on a single strike. That sounds like a lot, but altogether, it gave us something to look forward to every time we came back between a mission. Plus, you can customize your character and your room for money earned too. So that's the Outlast Trials from top to bottom. But does it all work in co-op? Let's talk about it. This one's for the co-op bros. Let's go, dude. When I heard the premise of a multiplayer Outlast game, I assumed it just meant plopping a second player into the campaign as an optional mode to add to the list of new features in a third title. I did not think they would go as hard as they did here, but my friends, they went hard. We're talking about co-op focused skills and abilities, very loadouts to diversify your team, objectives both large and small that require perfect coordination, and yes, they added lobby games. Love to see it. It's so much that I genuinely kind of struggle to know where to begin, so let's start with the objectives, level design, and communication, because they kind of all bundle together. I want to begin by talking through one of the very first objectives and levels you encounter in the trial, Kill the Snitch, so you can get a sense of what I mean. At one point in the trial, we enter a dark garage area, where we find a gas tank one of us can carry and several generators hidden throughout the area. It's our job to get the generators running, which has its own little minigame you need to solve, similar to a Helldivers 2 launch code. But at the same time, there's a ravaging police officer with an overzealous stun rod spitting nonsense about political agendas and his wife leaving him. He doesn't seem very happy. So while I need to finish getting the generator running, it's Gabe's job to be on the lookout or even distract the guard if he gets too close. It's a tight game of cat and mouse. Occasionally, the guard does find us and we make a mad dash for cover, waiting out our time before we can meet up again. It's tense not only because of the obvious fear factor, limited lighting, and potential for failure, but also because I'm relying on Gabe, he's kind of my eyes here, he's relying on me, and we'd pretty much be screwed without each other. As we finish up this section, another baddie enters the ring alongside the police officer, and we have to run like hell to get to the entry point, which requires one of us to hold up the garage long enough for the other to slip under, and then again hold it up for the other guy to get to the other side. I'm just gonna let you watch it and you can see what I mean. <laughs> Walking that one off. Okay, I'm at I'm at the gate. I'm at the gate. I'm gonna start opening for you guys. Okay. Yeah, I do, 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 do. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. This game is just crazy. It's wild. Oh, it's a Skinner man. Oh shit. Right. <laughs> help me out. 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 Help it ends with us barely making through by the skin of our chinny chin chin and we wander off to our next objective. This is just one of many examples I could choose from, like when Gabe and I were given a radar and a radio cooker used to find and destroy a target, having to carefully crawl through a space as we figure out where our victim is hiding. Gabe's got the radar, I've got the radio killer, we're constantly talking. The cat and mouse game became a cat and mouse, a slightly smaller mouse fiasco. It was awesome. Or one time Gabe and I got split apart on opposite sides of the map and we had to worm our way back to each other, yelling out when one of us was being harassed by the aptly named Goose Lady so the other can push their objective. It's always a little different and always requires you to actively work things out together, even when you're split apart. But I think what really pushed this title into the, wait, this is actually a great co-op game territory, was the build diversity. As I mentioned, after your first trial, you unlock your rigs, of which there are four, and they follow pretty typical co-op tropes. I mentioned them already, but as a reminder, you've got your heal, your stun, your smoke grenade, and that x-ray vision scanner thing. Each one has their own uses, and on a team of four with everyone carrying a different rig, you can see this game really shine. 
like how with the scanner you can tag enemies through walls so your partners can see them also, or how I can increase the heal radius to cover more of my friends. As you upgrade your character in other ways like with the prescriptions, you also add on abilities that make it easier to help each other too. It's not much, but it adds to the overall feeling that this is a carefully crafted co-op experience first, not a tacked on mode like I might have expected. Give it a second, give it a run, second, run, give it a second, and go, and go. Sucks to suck, police God. officer. Let's go, dude. Were we even Let's touched? Go. Were we even touched? Get hype. Oh my god. I don't know if we were touched, dude. A minus 13 minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so after all that, where did the co-op go wrong? Actually, there are a few key ways that hold it back from being a classic, like we thought it could have been about halfway through our playthrough. First up is a disappointing lack of enemy diversity. Literally speaking, there's only a few different enemies you'll run into, and they all act pretty much the same. It would have been cool if you had to coordinate differently depending on which enemy showed their face from trial to trial. But for the most part, you form a pretty basic method of making sure someone has a stun, or a smoke bomb, or a brick ready when things get dicey, and then you make your escape. You still have to coordinate and all, but it just feels like a missed opportunity given the setting. Speaking of setting, the devs had a lot of chances to tell an interesting story here and just totally dropped the ball. They took the classic here's a bunch of lore documents trope that we see in a lot of co-op games and double downed on it. It's unfortunate because the Outlast series Loki has some awesome storytelling and lore, but it's all regulated to reading text in a menu or the final cutscene after beating the game, no spoilers here of course. I don't see why there couldn't have been skippable cutscenes in between the trials that help you solve the mystery of what you're doing here and how it fits into the bigger picture. I mean, even just some small environmental storytelling within the trials would have made a lot of sense. It doesn't take away from your time, but could have really pushed this title to another level. Final thing to say here is that for some totally inexplicable reason, the team decided to make your final mission a single player only experience. The game up to that point is overwhelmingly designed around co-op, as I've talked about. Why would you ruin that momentum at the very end? Gabe and I had to end our night early and play this on our own time, and if you're like us, it's not easy to coordinate schedules, so it just really sucked. Felt like a needless and silly decision right at the finish line too. But given that we ended with that sour taste in our mouth and still feel as positive as we do is an impressive sentiment that I want to finish with here. To close it up, I do feel like I've clearly articulated why I found this game to be a blast with friends. What I want to emphasize again as I close is how impressive it is for a team that has only made single player experiences to so seamlessly transform their IP into a successful co-op experience. We don't have to look far to see why that usually ends up backfiring spectacularly for most developers. And I'm sure that some will disagree with me and wish for that more linear narrative experience and I totally get that. I'd be overstepping by suggesting that nothing was lost in this transformation, but that makes it no less impressive. And to have all those co-op features that I mentioned at the top, crossplay, shared progression, and to my count, zero server issues, is basically unheard of in modern times. I think it's kind of sad that this is sitting at a 72 on Open Critic, and also not surprised that despite the low score from critics, it has a very positive 93% from Steam users after a healthy 40,000 votes. This is a game that's intended to be played with your friends, not alone, and I think people who play it that way are seeing what they went for. So let this review be the one that acknowledges that. The Atlas Trials is indeed a great co-op game. Thanks as always for watching guys, this year is off to a great start for us and that's all thanks to you. If we helped you make a decision for or against the Atlas Trials, then we'd love to get a like, a comment, and most importantly, a sub. And if you're over the moon with the quality of our content, I mean, who wouldn't be? Consider finding more on our socials, joining our Discord channel, or even signing up for our Patreon. A special shout out goes to our Patreon members, they help to fuel this channel and keep us going. We look forward to giving you more co-op content in the next episode. Put, told me to put it. Hey, bro. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it purposely hey, hey, makes hey, it hey, go bro, longer. Bro. Trash can, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, hey. 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 <laughs> yeah. We've wanted this for so long. <laughs> She's coming. Okay, I'm going down. <laughs>